Uncle Leif, any news of father? He's... Dead. <laughs> Shut down, leading his men, Betty Lee. Lost in the stream. No chance to find his body. Coming. Rose, take the others down to the swamp. Come, Betty Lee. Run to the swamp. Hurry! Free, Mose, you and all the others. Free to go anywhere you please now. Does we have to go, Master Leif? Seems like there's no other place that we knows of. You can stay here if you wish, though there's not much left now. But we will join a wagon train in Vicksburg going into the West. I hope to a happier and a freer land. You'll find us here, Master Leif, if ever you all come back. What's old Mammy going to do without her honey child? Didn't she raise you from a baby? Oh, cry, Mammy. Maybe we can send for you later.
We've got to leave this country. Yeah, the chief is dead and our band is breaking up. The Yankee troops are coming in, too. Won't be so easy for us now. Where are you aiming to go? There's only one place to go, and that's west. They say it's a great country out there for men who can do things. When do we start? No time like right now. Reckon we can cross here. Here, sir. Master John, Master John, they say you're dead, sir. Where's Betty Lee and my brother? Gone, sir. Left about a week ago. Went out west, they said. Out west? Take us to the house, Mose. Why, uh, uh, there ain't no house, Master. It's been burned, sir. The Yankee. No, sir. No, sir. Them bad, bad men. Them gorillas, sir. I regret that I cannot offer you the customary hospitality. Quite all right, General. Uh, I understand. I, I'm sorry, but I've forgotten your name again. Thorne. Lieutenant Thorne. I believe you said you were not in one of my regiments. Why, Master John? I was with the cavalry, sir. But I did not have the honor of serving under you. I see. With your permission, I'll be going, General. I have a long journey before me. You're leaving our country? Yes, sir. I, too, must journey into the West. It's a forlorn hope, of course. But if you should meet my brother and my daughter, tell them that I'm still alive. He's Colonel Leif Harvey of our army and my daughter, Betty Lee. I'll do that, sir. Words are poor things to express one's gratitude for what you have done. It was a privilege, sir, and I wish you a speedy recovery. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, General. Goodbye. You are a true gentleman. That young man saved my life, Mose. If it weren't for him, I'd have drowned. He is indeed one of those of whom the South will always be proud. How come him wearing that Yankee uniform, then? A Yankee uniform? Yes, Martha. A Yankee brought me home. Lieutenant Thorne, you've been brought to my attention by your commanding officer, who most highly endorses your courage, military conduct, and efficient handling of all duties assigned you. Reports have come of a plot to establish an independent country on our western borders. To be in swift communication with this section, we are constructing a telegraph line there. The same conspiracy threatens this project. It will be your duty to uncover the leaders of this plot and place them in custody. It may be advisable to wear civilian clothes. These confidential orders contain your credentials and assure you of the fullest cooperation of the armed forces wherever you may contact them. With them, you will find a new commission promoting you to the rank of captain in the United States Army. Thank you, Mr. President. I will do my utmost to merit your confidence. I know you will, Captain. Goodbye and good luck to you. Thank you, sir. It's a survey party, all right. Land the telegraph line. We've got to find out where that line's going. Why don't you ask them? Because they're keeping it a secret. They wouldn't tell you. But they must have a map with them. And for maps in that tent, I mean to have a look at it. Oh. 
You fellas ride over, ask them a lot of questions. I'll get in that tent through the back. I couldn't hire you if I wanted to. All that's done at headquarters in Dodge City. You fellas laying out a road? Yeah. Oh, something like that. How far is your road going to? Oh, somewhere out in the west. There's plenty of wagon trains heading that way. You might get on as a guard. We might head for the Salt Lake Trail and pick one up there. Well, ain't that what we was gonna do? Much obliged. Reckon we'll be riding. Well, good luck to you. Wonder what them fellas wanted. Seemed kind of aimless to me. Ah, uh, you're too suspicious, Pete. Pays to be a job like this. Let's get to work. Won't be long till the construction gang will be catching up with us. You're right. Did you find it? Yes. Telegraph line's going to Sageville. Sageville? Won't the boss be surprised? Now we've got to find that wagon train we're after. Yeah, and the ammunition wagon. We're not talking too much about that, though, remember? Say, we've got to get cleaned up. We've got to look like gentlemen. <laughs> as much as we can. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, boys. Howdy. Which one of you men is Larkin? I am. My name is Thorne. Well, we heard you were coming, Captain. Glad to see you. This is Pete Morris. Glad to know you, Captain. Sure glad you come. Yes, you're just in time. What's happened? Some men dropped in on us today. We only saw two of them, but there must have been three. We found some tracks leading through the back of the tent, and my papers were scattered all over. Anything missing? No, only some important information might have been gained. Which way did they go? Left here, they rode over the hog back yonder. They probably left a trail. I'll see if I can pick it up. You boys better keep moving. The construction gang's only a day behind you. All right, Captain, we'll do that. Bye, boys. Bye, Captain. Bye. Change our names the whole book. Doesn't seem quite honest. It's safer, Betty Lee. We're traveling into Yankee country. We're starting all over again in a new land, even to our name.
And that's what I recollect, honey. Wagon busy with that wood, and I didn't notice. What seems to be the trouble with the wagon? Well, it's loaded down pretty heavy, gets stuck in the sand all the time. I've had to get out and shove it several times today. Well, what do you suppose makes it so heavy? Well, I took a look in there, thought it was kitchen stove, but there's a lot of creeks in there covered with blankets. Oh, I see. Permit me, miss. Oh, thank you. Haven't I seen you before? Maybe you have, miss. My name is Rand, and I also came from the South. Mr. Rand. This is my uncle, Colonel ha uh, Colonel Holbrook. A pleasure, sir. Thank you, sir. Many are kindred spirit in this part of the country. In fact, there's a movement afoot now that can't fail to interest those from the old South. Why, what do you mean, sir? We'd better speak about that later, but I'll be glad to introduce you to some influential people when we reach Sageville, well, Colonel. Thank you again, sir. And I have an idea that... I beg your pardon, miss, but is your name Harvey? No, it's Holbrook. And what business is it of yours? Sorry. I was mistaken. I hope you'll excuse me. Say, did you find your friends? Not yet. He's looking for some fellas that joined up today. Uh, well, we joined up today. What are you doing that for? What are you talking about? You fellas couldn't be the ones I'm looking for, could you? <laughs> no. There must be several hundred guns in them cases. Well, boys, tonight's the night we listen for the owls. You want us with you? No, I'll go alone. Hey, that new fellow I was telling you about is still asking questions. Never mind about him now. We've got to arrange for the attack. Listen. What are you doing here? Please be quiet. You don't understand. I understand that you're acting very suspiciously. What is it, Betty Lee? Nothing, Uncle Lace. Lace? Betty Lee?
in the morning. When wagon train start again. Uh, me tell. The ammunition and rifle are yours, Chief. But you must attack the wagon train to get them. Hmm. Good. We get them when sun come again. In my new country, we will live at peace with the Red Man. But we must stand together against our common enemy who would drive us from this fair land. Hmm. attack. We ain't gonna be here then. In fact, we're getting out right now. Yeah, we'll ride away casual like. I don't reckon we'll be noticed.
side for you, boys. What's that? The cavalry. How do you reckon they got word? Who's that with them? Where's that fellow I tried to tell you about? I knew him for a spy the minute I seen him. Just in time, Thorn. How did you happen to know the attack? I trailed an Indian that was sneaking around here last night and overheard a plot to attack the train this morning. So I headed for the fort. Say, it's a good thing you did. Oh, so glad you see you, boy. You certainly saved our legs. What happened to those tough-looking customers we were talking to last evening? Say, come to think of it, those fellows rode out just before the attack. Why, they must have run away, the dirty cowards. We better tell Leeds so he can change his plans. What about the wagon with the guns in it? We'll take care of that when it reaches town. I'm sorry I was so mean last night. That's all right, Miss uh, Holbrook. Got most of them rounded up, Thorne. Good. The men I suspect have gone, Major. But I'll know them again when I see them. How about the one you heard talking with the Indian? I'll know him, too, by his voice. Good work. We've got to break up this conspiracy. If you need any help, just call on me. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, I tell you the time is right to establish an independent republic. Separated from the states by Indians whose friendship I hold, we will be doubly safe against interference. There remains but the threat of the telegraph, whose destination we are trying to learn. We must not allow it to arrive, just as we must not allow other dangerous elements to remain among us. We shall now have news of the telegraph from Mr. Rance. Did you learn its destination? Yes. Where is it? Right here at Sageville. Here? If our enemy has direct communication with Washington, our plans are ruined. The telegraph line must be destroyed. But not yet. We must wait until it comes within striking distance. Then. Our plan will succeed. Gentlemen, you may go. Remember, I'm sending you out into the field as missionaries to win others to our cause. Be cautious in not revealing too much of your plans to others until you know that your listener is in sympathy with us. Good day. I think he knows what he's talking about. 
I'll see you again. Was the Indian attack successful? No. Would have been, and the Indians would have had the guns and ammunition by now. But the cavalry was warned, and it saved the wagon train. How could they have known? They were brought by a man who joined the wagon train yesterday. I'm sure he's a spy. That man is a menace to us and our plans. He must be removed. He will be. I did not want that wagon train to come. Or it will bring people who might not be in sympathy with us. We've been fairly successful so far in getting rid of our enemies. True. But too many killings might arouse suspicion. And we cannot afford that until we're more strongly entrenched. But since the wagon trains must come, we'll give them a royal welcome. We'll soon find out who is for or against us. present Colonel Holbrook and his niece. Mr. Leeds, the gentleman I was telling you about, Colonel. Please welcome Colonel Holbrook. I, too, am of the old South, and know perhaps better than any other what has brought you and yours out here. You are most kind, sir. Not at all, sir. We need men like you out here, sir. And I shall personally see to it that you have a place to stay until you have determined where you would like to invest in some property. Well, it's very nice of you to talk like Not that. Not at all, sir. Uh, Many happy families are here already. I think you will be interested in what we're trying to do. I shall tell you more after you have recovered from your journey. You are very nice, sir. And now, if you folks will excuse us, we'll see you later. Certainly. I hope your uncle isn't in a hurry to buy land, especially from that man. Why? I can't tell you just yet. But delay matters if you can. I don't understand. You didn't understand once before. But you found out I was right, didn't you? So, that's the Yankee spy. We'll deal with him. We gotta get that gun wagon out and hide it. Better keep your eye on that Yankee spy. I'm just waiting for a chance to get back at him. Don't worry, you'll get it. I, too, am of the New England country, and I know just why you've come. Well, maybe you do, and maybe you don't. Oh, yes, indeed. And now, when you're ready to buy your land, if you'll just consult me, I'll be glad to show you some very desirable property. Hmm. We'll be safe here, till we want it.
Have you anything more to report, Captain? I have, sir, a lot. What is it? I found the man I heard talking to the Indian. Who is he? Horace Leeds. Are you sure? Positive, sir. I know Leeds, of course. Everybody does. But I thought him merely a bag of wind, a promoter. That wagon load of guns and ammunition intended for the Indians is hidden down by the river. Give me its location before you go and I'll send some men to get it. Leeds was counting on that to gain the Indians' help when he needs it. He may still be able to gain their help. The Indians are restless, dissatisfied, easily aroused. Their crops failed this year and game has been driven further west as more people come. Do you think a wagon load of supplies would help keep them neutral? That's an excellent idea. Are you willing to want to take it? Immediately, sir. The great white father sends his red brothers much food. Grain, meat. He wants the Indians to live safely and in peace. The bad white men promise the Indians many guns, but they speak with forked tongues, for they only want the Indians to fight their battles for them. Then the soldiers must fight the Indians, which is bad, for it is not the Indians' fight. The white father wishes the Indians to remain at peace and let the white man settle his own wars. The Indian believes the white man who proves his self friend by bringing food he will not listen to a white man who speaks with fork or tongue. It is bad. He has already led us on trails that are crooked. Come, we will go smoke the pipe of peace and be brothers. don't want us to go to that meeting tonight. By golly, I got a good notion to go anyhow and tell him something. Where is the meeting? Well, this little house outside the edge of town. I'll show you if you want to go. Public and the end to all Yankee spies. Rather a Yankee spy than one who plots with the Indian to murder his own kind. You're mean and me. You lie. <laughs>
any more traitors here. Let them step out. I'll advise you not to play any more tricks, you mangy coyote. Come on, Jay. and neighbors, the time has come when we must form a free and independent country of our own. The town is ready to startle the world with its deeds. We are at peace with the surrounding Indian tribes. The Union is engaged in reconstructing the unfortunate South. But before they can stop us, before they can even become aware of what we are trying to do, we'll be safe in an empire of our own far from the heel of the oppressor whom we both hate and fear. Now, my friends, let me implore you. I've been listening to you, Leeds. Friends, before you make a hasty decision, I think you should know the type of man who is attempting to lead you. He says that you are at peace with the Indians. If that is true, why did they attack the wagon train and kill your friends and kinfolk? I'll tell you why. Because he bribed the Indians and incited them to attack you. I defy you to prove that. Of course you do because you know I can't prove it just yet. But I know it, and you know it. He lies. He's a spy sent by the Yankees to upset and ruin our plans. Friends, some of us are from the north, others from the south. But we have come here for the same purpose, hoping to find a happier land where we can live in peace and security. But we can never do so while there are traitors and murders among us, like this man. Neighbors, are you going to believe this man? No. And we've had enough of you and your lying accusations. Eddie Lee, I warn you to go slowly, Leeds. There are more loyal and intelligent people in your midst than you think. accuse me of treachery. Now listen to me. I force the issue, sir. I think Leeds will be frightened into a desperate move that will betray him. Is there any danger of his succeeding? Not without Indian aid. And we know he won't get that. I'll warn the telegraph crew to be ready for an attack. If you will, Captain. Hello, Captain. Hello, Larkin. I came over to warn you there may be an attack. However, the troops will be nearby and we'll try and prevent it. We'll be ready, sir. Is the line in operation? Fairly good. I want to send a personal message. Uh, who to, Captain? General John Harvey, late of the Confederate Army. Meadowbrook, Kentucky.
Good evening. Good evening. I was hoping you'd come over to see us. I've been wanting to see you. Tell me, are you really a Yankee spy? I'm afraid I'll have to plead guilty to being a Yankee, Miss Betty. But I think the spy part an unjust accusation. The war is over. The spies usually work as openly as I've been doing. Surely there can be no doubt for my sympathies lie or what I'm trying to do. Then your sympathies lie? Only with my country. Your country. Our country, Miss Betty. I'm only trying to drive out these conspirators who would force us into another war, even more cruel than the one we've just been through. It's going to be awfully hard to convince Uncle. I can understand that. You see, this man Lee... Betty! Betty Lee! You! Step aside, Betty Lee. I'll deal with this sneaking spy. We owe him our lives, Uncle Leif. He has canceled any such debt by his unjust accusations. Go to your room. I'll not go. Colonel Holbrook, I think you're being most unfair. Not only to yourself, I'll not trade words with you, sir. You may go this time. But if you ever enter this house again, I'll shoot you on sight. I'm sorry, Miss Betty. Good evening. Betty Lee, I want you to... Rance, these people are not in sympathy with us. Therefore, they must be eliminated. Have you sent the guns and the bullets to the Indians? Bart's on his way with him now. The gun wagon's gone. Gone? The Yankee spy. Rally all the men you can find. Tonight, we'll strike at the people on that list. At dawn, we'll destroy the telegraph. Go to the Indian chief. Tell him we will not pay him until he's helped us trap the cavalry there. I know these Indians. It's better to make promises you never intend to keep than to pay them in advance. Now let us map our course of action for tonight. Jace, you and the boys meet me at the head of the pass near Cottonwood Hollow. Job, we'll wipe out the Thompson family. At dawn, we're to meet Leeds and Rance and clean out the telegraph. Burning, killing, the whole Thompson family's wiped out. Who did it? Indians? Indians, nothing. It was white men, our own kind. It was Leeds' work, I tell you. I recognized his men. Leeds. Oh. Come in, Captain. Leeds' killers have just wiped out two families. We must act at once, sir. Prepare to leave immediately, Captain.
We're just in time, Major. They started the attack. Our plan will succeed. We'll draw the cavalry here, and then the Indians will attack, and we'll wipe them out. Here come the cavalry now, right into our trap. Indians won't help us. What do you mean? I mean they ain't coming. They nearly scalped me before I could get away from them. Take refuge in that house. Holbrook! What is the meaning of this intrusion? We've been betrayed. Arm yourself for the attack. It is we who have been betrayed by your lies, sir. I know you now for what you are. You scoundrel. Murderer. Rush in the house. Head them all. They're coming up the path. Drop those guns. Steady there. As I explained, Major, Leeds is the head of this conspiracy. The other two are his aides. Just a minute, Captain. Isn't this Colonel Holbrook? One of Leeds' most ardent sympathizers? No, sir. He is Colonel Harvey, late of the Confederate Army. He aided me in the capture of these conspirators. Take them to the fort. Put them in iron. Yes, sir. Colonel Harvey, as one soldier to another, I thank you for your cooperation. I hope you'll be happy here, General. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, sir. Now, General, if you're ready, I'll take you to your fault. This is the happiest day of my life. I'm going to town for a little while, Uncle Leif. All right, don't be long. I won't. Won't you come in? Thank you. How do you do, Colonel? How do you do, sir? I have a little surprise for you folks. Father! John. Oh. Betty Lee. Oh, Father. They said that you were dead. Uh, yes, I know, Betty Lee. John. Leif. You can thank Captain Thorne. He not only saved my life, 
but brought me out here. Betty Lee, bring that young man back here. you stop when I called you? Why, well, I didn't hear you, Betty. You're just a mean, stubborn, ornery Yankee. Then why did you follow me, young lady? I didn't. I mean, Uncle Leif sent me after you. Why? To bring you back. We're not going back. We're going to town. To town? Yes. A minister just arrived on the stage today. Will you go with me, Betty? Thank you.